he's an incredibly smart player and we got to see it on the battlefield every single time that he played but being behind the bench is very different this is going to be probably his biggest task yet and that's readying his troops for war because that's what we're going to michael and starting off with the bands disrupt bands first and it's sam fisher aka zero will not be in play for this map Okay, so interestingly, Sonics actually do play Zero 75% of the time when he's available. He's one of the most played operators on the Sonics lineup across all maps, and he has a decent win rate of 46%. So that is a targeted ban, and it makes a lot of sense. Nomad is the response from Disrupt, and that ban... Uh, or sorry, not from Disrupt, excuse me, from the Sonics, and that ban also makes sense. A similarly popular operator with Disrupt uh, being played 72% of the time when available by them and having a very respectable win rate of 58%. So both attack bands, targeted bands. On Consulate, though, Nomad makes a lot more sense. And the defense bands are atyp uh, just, yeah, they're typical. Well, Valkyrie will not be in play. Mira joins her. There was some chatter on social media, by the way. I think it was Macy J who actually talked about this and said that there are a lot better bands right now than just banning Mira. Obviously, that pertained to ranked, but... A lot of teams mm. have actually left her up, and we've seen her be played and used by a wide variety of teams. It's also worth noting, by the way, as we now get into round number one here, the very first defense from Disrupt will be on the top floor, console office and meeting room. This is a bomb site that isn't played all that frequently, but Disrupt seem to have a better idea of it than we do. This current matchup is being played on the patch that existed before yesterday's update. And it is important to note that for all of these matchups. That means that the Zofia uh, recoil nerf hasn't come into effect yet. Frost still has her 1.5. Alibi does not. The TCSG and the ACS-12 are still weaker than they were, and Tachanka has also not been buffed. I, the reason why I say that is because the last part, Tachanka has been uh, quite scary down below in some of the clips that I've seen with his recent buffs, bringing a deployable shield and having some added destruction to that gun, it means that when he's played in the basement of this particular map, he can be an absolute menace. Well, he's might show up, but he's not going to show up in the current iteration that is on the live build. Yep. Yeah, definitely that soft destruction buff is going to be huge for his LMG. Um, what I think we've got going on in this match right now that's most interesting to me is the investment by Yellow. We've seen some light investments to Yellow recently on Consulate. This time it's going to be a little bit more heavy. Uh, disrupt putting all three of their ADSs here. Probably going to have some, uh, well, my magnets go there as well at some point throughout the round. You're also putting uh, you know, some Surya Gates in uh, on the window just to try and burn more. Now, of course, Thatcher is still available um, on Consulate. It's not crazy relevant, but him being here is going to make it easier to kill a player on yellow because you can, you know, Thatcher jam all of those ADSs in one go. So this upstairs hold is going to show off the castle Aruni strats that we tend to see when run in conjunction with one another. And there it is highlighted on your screen, pretty much close to the center, that double door inside a console office where DP fire is playing off of. You're going to have to burn through the Aruni gate first before you can take out the barricade. It's just a little bit extra utility. Meanwhile, that bathroom wall that DP fire was hoping to try to play uh, safely off of has now been opened up, but he's going to use that as an advantage. It's almost like an ejected mirror with the way that we saw that first Selma go off from Rexon. Shuttle posted up, of course, on yellow stairs and he'll re-engage the Aruni gate. Oh. He will miss the Flores drone. That is damaging oh. and it takes out the ADSs. That's a full bank of three right there. That's all of your coverage. Now it's more pressure on DP Fire to get those Wumai Magnets in a good position to support Shuttle. He'll drone him out on that position and still realize that he's on yellow stairs. 90 seconds left in the round, and Shuttle will now try to patrol that top skylight, but he does so at his own peril, gets stunned and flashed for it. As it looks like they've managed to burn most of the anti-utility. Kansan gets a call in the wrong direction. He's punished for it, even though Rexon's credited with that opening kill. The advantage goes to DG. They managed to take two down as we could have a reset, but no, the Sonics want to press the issue. It's Yeti down below to do the damage as he'll ascend yellow stairs. Smoke goes out over his head. DP Fire will still watch this position as you see that the defense have lost control of the top of yellow. Not easy to regain that position. DP is really back against the wall, quite literally. Retro there to support him. Good that Retro's getting aggressive. Two players from the Sonics on CEO Repel. They're waiting for their opportunity to push and go for that plant, but they haven't been presented with one just yet, especially with the bulletproof camera constantly feeding the defender's information. 
Super watching the crossover on yellow. If you see the Walai of DP Fire, try to pivot in that spot. He'll have to swing in and get the diffuser down, though, and DP Fire will be the one to stop him. UMP in hand, J9 no silences Yeti. That's down below. The pressure from the Sonics is now all in the window. The two same spots, or at least it seemed, but no, it's Grixter to try and head on up. The Castle Barricade gets hit. Super's inside of the bomb site, smoke shrouding his line of sight. But it doesn't matter. Disrupt have the intel, and boy, oh boy, a nice shot there from the Wamai of DP Fire will end the round. DG up 1 0. So, for those of you who don't know, Castle Barricades take 12 punches to break. So, you can uh, just punch them 12 times and they'll break, obviously. Uh, what that usually means for positions like the one DP Fire was just playing is that you can prep that Castle Barricade with 11 punches and then punch it once and it breaks immediately. And now you can engage the people who are repelling in three, through CEO. That's exactly what DP Fire did. Uh, unfortunately, though, when he was prepping the Castle Barricade, he miscounted and only punched it 10 times, so he had to punch it twice to break it. Doesn't really end up mattering. The, inf uh, the, the uh, round was not influenced, um, but it's just a nice little trick that uh, we saw Disrupt set themselves up to, with to counter the CEO window play. So that was really targeted play from Disrupt, and it was smart setup. Sonics, it looked like they had the number of Disrupt set up uh, overall, especially with the way that the Sonics dealt with the yellow pressure. However, when blows came to blows on the actual site hit, Disrupt was just too well prepared. Well, there's a reason why they were called the Kings of Consulate by Jesse Chick, and that's only one round, but we'll continue to watch over how that ends up playing out. We're going to see somewhat of a similar hold up top from what we saw DG. Obviously, it's a wildly different lineup, but they're going to be playing in similar positions as they sit over top of the bomb site, which is now the lobby on the first floor. Right. This is going to be very vital map control for DG to play off of. DP Fire will be playing these anti-utility operators quite often. You saw Manuel Mai in round number one. He's going to be on Warden this time, and Warden is an operator whose presence in the meta has almost always been absent. But there are niche uses for him, and it seems like we are seeing him far more frequently than we did in seasons past. Yeah, bringing him on this side in particular is useful because you can dissuade the attackers of going for a smoke plant on the front door, which is very common with this bomb site. So, uh, good pick there, I think, for DG to counter that smoke plant if it were to come out. It's not likely, but it could. Super does have the smokes. Um... Right now, what's happening is Sonics are trying to take admin office. Even if you're going to go for a front door take, you do need to clear out above the top floor. As Parker mentioned earlier, it's a point of focus for both the attackers and the defenders. And that's where you see J9O right now. He is in the crucial position. He has to hold this spot, commonly referred to as Bosco spot, but really just the corner of projector, in order for his team to deny plant in main lobby. Nice angle being held there from J9O as we cycle over to DP Fire now watching to see if somebody's going to push him from over towards Paper, known as Copier for most people. Grixer got the lead off kill and he'll continue to walk right up, but he won't be able to shoot through that wall whatsoever. Yana has been surging in terms of her pick rate, displacing Ash for most people. Number one, she's got the same gun that she has, that Ash has access to, and she's also got the Gon 6, so with the, uh, with the weaponry available, and the grenades to boot. She ends up being quite a potent force. Down goes Rexon, by the way, as there was a run out, and well, they get back into the site quite quickly for Disrupt. Iconic's going to continue to flirt with this, and now down goes Super. That's the Diffuser also surrendered over by Zulu, tagged by Disrupt. And I know from above, we'll have to tussle with Yeti on top of Visa Stairs. Abysmal start to the action there for the Sonics. The run out for Iconic working out, and the fact that he was not cut off is really not great. Um, condemning, even. And that's thanks to Retro supporting Iconic and getting that kill on the cutoff that Super was trying to put up. Now, as the action continues, it's another kill for Retro. Down goes Yeti, and it looks like Disrupt are about to get their second. But it's not over yet. Kanzen and Grixer, two of the top performers for the Sonics, are up to bat. It's Kanzen over towards Long Desk. He'll watch Connector now, crossed and playing over by Spiral Stairs to see if somebody pushes him from the back. The problem is, is that there's so many angles for him to cover. Grixer's the next one in the line of fire, trying to outduel J90. J90 takes some damage for it. It's from the back, the Kanzen will hit it. He's still over by Long Desk now. Just waiting very patiently. DB Fire knows he doesn't need to move an inch, and there he goes with the MPX in hand, and down goes Kanzen. Grixer with just a fraction of his HP is in the middle of the bomb site, but he doesn't hold that diffuser. He'll need to pick it up. He was dropped in Zulu earlier on as Super came tantalizingly close to getting to the bomb site. So frags it is for Grixer. And he's got three players from DG who are not going to give him an inch. And all of them simply wait as Iconic is able to get the final kill. 
the timer would have given the round to DG anyway, and, well, the Sonics haven't put up a good result so far through these two rounds as Disrupt is up 2 nothing. So I think the community poll is a really relevant one for this, Parker, most notably because of the map pick. And it was discussed on the analyst desk how this is a disrupt map. We're seeing that reflected so far in the play. And the question that pops into everyone's head is obviously going to be, well, okay, why is the Sonics or why are the Sonics going here if this is a disrupt friendly map? Usually the answer is they know something we don't. Usually the answer is, okay, they've got the counterplay. They've, re they've reviewed the VODs. They feel confident they're going to be able to deal with their opponent on this map. What we're seeing so far through those last two rounds is a completely contained Sonics attack. Protect your bombs from being At every point attackers. where the Sonics attempt to branch out, gain more footing, more control, attackers and maybe open up more crossfires to, you know, get the, get the plant down, whatever their objective happens to be, get all the kills, uh, they are failing because Disrupt are recognizing those pushes, answering them, answering them directly, confronting the, uh, the attacks clear, and just winning the fight. Um, and this is not because, oh, they're better in winning fights. It's because Disrupt have the right setup to answer the attacks the Sonics are presenting. Now, that offer, uh, offers a new question for everyone is, where's the pre-planned clears that Sonics must have going into a match they know Disrupt to be good on? It's a tough one, and one I don't have an answer to. I wouldn't be too surprised if the Sonics, after this round, end up calling a timeout to try and cool the team down, because going down 3 nothing with DG on defense could end up being a fatal blow, especially with how evenly matched these teams are. Though, as we will point out, this is a very strong map for Disrupt, and... Well, Consulate does tend to be quite a bit of a coin toss between the teams as to who ends up with the upper hand, with the attackers or defenders. The fact that Disrupt already went to a bomb site that we don't see all that frequently and won in relatively convincing fashion is cause for celebration on their end. It's a downstairs hold now for Disrupt as they continue to cycle through these bomb sites. They'll be defending Garage and, well, with 30 seconds off the clock, Sonics have already opened up one of those Garage panels with an exothermic charge from Super. That open up, you do have your exact path laid out for you for the Sonic, so that's great. They know where they're going to go. And it's better to open the wall early rather than late. Sometimes we see teams wait way too long to get that open before they actually go for the uh, execution. Not so for the Sonics. This gives them time to ponder. They have also cleared out directly above the site, but not fully above the site. As you can see, Retro and CEO... He's also got DP fire far afield by projector to assist him. So two roamers on the top floor for Disrupt. They must be dislodged before the Sonics can effectively hit the site. And that's going to be a problem if they do not. Down goes Grixer. And oh. I don't I don't know how he died exactly, but he was downed by Retro. That is not ideal. It's so that he fell. I don't know exactly what happened with Grixer. There goes your Gone 6. There goes your grenades. And well, there's an exothermic hmm. charge still up from Super. Here it'll go off now as the Mute Jammer gets cleared away, and Yeti will pre-fire into a very soft wall. Drone work being done from Super with just over a minute to go. J901 cam duty, Retro watching from two angles above. He's all the way on that top floor, staring down intently. Mm. He does not exactly trusting DP fire here now, though, as the Mozzie's fallen off, and Retro is playing in this particular position. He needs to be wary of getting pressured from above. The thing is, is that the Sonics will have to work very quickly to do that because they are down in terms of man count. Smokes will go off, though, two of them, and Super will run right in. Retro finished off by Kanzen in the midst of the smoke. Doesn't look like the toxic canisters are working, but we can't exactly tell, so Iconic will bring the fight right to Super. Oh. He gets down, but it's a little bit too late. Diffuser is not planted, so good for Disrupt to hold on to this. The Diffuser will need to be retrieved. Yeti knows that there's somebody close by, and he'll walk right in the pre-fire with Rexon and Yeti in tandem. That Diffuser still down will need to be picked back up, and that is the more challenging aspect of this, as it's a 3v3. 20 seconds left, Disrupt need to hang on and just stop the Sonics from grabbing the case. Shuttle watching one angle, Jaynano has been finished off, so it's him and DP Fire working together. Yeti, Diffuser in hand, he's in front of White Van, tries to do some damage, but he's being watched by the Bulletproof camera, and he'll continue to look in a different direction. Jaynano picked back up. Rexon will take the fight right to them, he's got two more lined up, and he'll connect oh! with all three of them! The Sonics finally break the streak, and they put up their first round on the board. What a massive save from Rexon! It seemed like it was going to be a disrupt round. They almost had it in the bag. Everything going their way. The utility play exceptional from J9O with the gas canisters. And Sonic's execution, though it seemed like the most well-planned of the three so far, was about to fall flat. And what did Rexon do? He said, heck this. Press W. 
And he picked up three big kills to win the round for his team. Massive win there for the man. And really proving his worth for the Sonics. As they, as you mentioned, Parker, get their very first round. I will have to mention, though, that was an awful close one there. Tremendously close round. Tremendously. And if it wasn't for Rexon finding his way up into the depths of the bomb site, then that one falls by the wayside for Sonics. It didn't take quite as long for Rexon to find his footing through these three rounds. He's leading the team with five kills, and we need a big game from him, don't we, Sonics fans? We, you and I, need a big game from him because we want this to be as close as is humanly possible. Give me 15 rounds of this and inject it straight into my veins. Yes, sir. Because we I'm can't addicted. let this one go quietly into the good night. We're, no team is going to win 7-1, 7-2. No, no, no. This is going to go down to the very bitter end, or else I will be filing a very strongly worded letter to the manager. Yes, with whoever loses. Um, yeah, I, I think we've already seen some really good siege here. Actually, surprisingly, some good siege out of both of the matches we had today, because the last match was not billed as being, you know, the standout match, but it was, and this is meeting that. So, good to see Disrupted Sonic's going toe-to-toe -to -toe here. Uh, as we move on to the next round, looks like we've got ourselves... I'm gonna go ahead and assume that's a Teller's defense because we can't see the bomb anywhere else. So there is a pulse in play, which means that you're gonna have to deal with those C4s from below. You've got lots of roamers on the yellow CEO side, and that seems to be where Sonics wanna clear from. Makes sense to start on the other side of the map. Disrupt have been spread out quite well on every single site that they have gone to, so expect them to play on that top floor. As I say, that iconic drops out, so there's the caster's curse at play. You can also see a mute jammer over by yellow stairs. As is, yes, you are correct, it is a Teller's Archives defense. Through these four rounds, Disrupt now played on every single bomb site. Mm. So they'll wait. J90 is going to try to tempt fate here, playing over on yellow with just mute jammers by his side. There goes one of them as he sees bullets just over his shoulder. Kanzan and him will be in a head-to-head -head gun duel, but the wall blows up. So Kanzan's attention is now somewhere else in a perfect time for them to swing onto him. Kanzan is determined to drag somebody down to hell with him, and he's going to do his best efforts with that one. J90 finishes off the fight, though, and Disrupt get the opening pick. Great crossfire between J90 and DP Fire. Good teamwork, and Disrupt continue to work together to get these kills. Kanzan trying his best, but just wasn't enough. When he starts popping off like Rexon did, things are going to get really difficult here for Disrupt, though. The play from Jane I know works great as he wide swings with the shotgun, but immediately refragged by Grixer. And while the man count is still in favor of Disrupt, at least Sonics finally find the board. Refrags are not enough, though, for the Sonics. They need to do something to try and close this gap. DP Fire might be the most uh, salacious of the targets as he's sitting at 50%. He's over by Copier, holding down Admin as well, and he'll continue to move in this area. This is a very vital part of the map to hold as a defender, because if there's a diffuser being planted on the main floor, you can easily drop through that hatch. Parker. The diffuser, by the way, is miles and miles away from that bomb yeah. site. It's being escorted in by Grixer and Rexen. Super down below, it looks like it'll be a straight take to the bomb what? site. Grixer are doing some damage, can't do enough to the three armor of Retro, so they'll just decide to storm on in and Retro's fallen off. He doesn't need to contest this. So instead he'll spray through, Super wins the duel, his very first kill of the matchup. Inside of the bomb site, he can very safely go to defuse, and he's gonna throw down some smokes to do just that. Do they know that there's a flank coming in from Iconic? It certainly seems like they're wise to his parlor tricks. Down he goes to Rexon, and my oh my, the Sonics just wipe the board clean. Goodbye to DG, and we have ourselves a tie game. Parker, we were talking about if any individual does not show up, save a few names, it's going to cause some problems. Well, the two worst performers so far through this stage in this lobby are two. It's, it's retro and it's super. All right. So if you're talking about the lack of performance, you're pointing a finger at them. And what happened in that round crucially involved both of them. It was retro versus super on the engagement at the back of site. And unfortunately for Disrupt, very fortunately for the Sonics, Super won that fight. Now, what happened there is because Super wins that fight and Retro takes no bodies with him as he dies, there is no one else in that site, in, in archives, for site control in favor of the defenders. So now, suddenly, it's a three versus three, and you have to retake your own site. Two bottlenecks. It was just as hard as it was for the attackers getting in. But, yeah. Sonics managed to hold it out. Well done for the Sonics. Well done to Super getting that kill. Really important frag.
Now something to bring up on your screen. Well, they might not have won the round, but you can win some rounds yourself in casual, unranked, and ranked by purchasing one of the R6 share skins available in the store right now. On your screen was the Disrupt skin. The Sonics also have a skin in the game. So just like in our previous matchup, every single team competing, they've got some skins to show off and you can buy them right now. Some of the proceeds directly benefit the team and the players and as well, the R6 esports program. I gotta say, even though we don't see her a lot, that R4C skin by Disrupt is very clean. Yeah, it is really clean. And we see a lot of really cool um, esports uh, related skins because there's you know, a lot of design that goes into a lot of thought from the teams. Um, we, uh, even if you're not going to use the R4C, again, it's a great way to support the uh, the team that you do care about if you happen to be a Disrupt fan. Now, here now, we've got a CEO defense and a CEO-focused attack. The biggest hurdle here will be, of course, Yellow Stairs, but with the Thatcher disabling those ADSs is not going to be too tall of a task. Assuming Yeti knows where he needs to place those, uh, those EMPs. At what point do you think jitters start to take effect for Disrupt, by the way? I mean, honestly, Parker, I, I'd be surprised if they weren't feeling jitters already. It's early on, but look at that. We've got some kills going before we even hit the last 90 seconds. And uh, it's going to be the leadoff for DG. And it's iconic with ice in his veins. Both he and Jane, I know, are technically Sonic's alumni, as is easily the coach of DG. So that's a storyline that would... Be a bit more prominent were this not such an incredibly important game between these teams given that the implications of matchup and decide who goes to the mexico major joining all the other 15 teams who have already been confirmed we're just a show in a couple weeks that we'll see down in mexico dg have repositioned by the way now as we look towards the final minute of round number five and they're anticipating a push over towards visa and over towards admin and that's where they're going to sit they know Ooh. that Yeti is down there. He could end up catching the Aruni. Oh, he looks the wrong way, and it's iconic second kill as we officially hit the 60-second mark. That's, That's a big, big lead one. for DG. Yeah, massive kill. Uh, Yeti, not only with his EMPs out of play, but also just not able to pick up any kills here. And now, Sonics, they've recovered these rounds before. Last time, though, is a three versus four, not three versus five. This is going to be difficult. Iconic still playing by Visa Staircase. These Castle Barricades... I cannot be understated in their influence of these rounds. They've been so important. And it's allowing Iconic and Jane Ino to hold a very important angle here. DP Fire will get one at the top of Spiral. Jane Ino adds to it by contributing yet another kill by Visa Staircase. And that repel in from Rexen had no true hope. He does get a kill in the entry. but So not a flawless, but it's still a win for Disrupt. And Parker, you asked when they'd be getting the jitters. And I think that's going to alleviate some of that pressure. Absolutely. Neither of these teams have had to burn a timeout just yet. So they will... Go through this very first half, saving everything they can for the final six rounds, or however many might be needed. There'll be a lobby defense from Disrupt right now, as DG were successful on this site in times past. The gridlock is showing, and that is a bit unorthodox. We'll see if that's just sixth pick bait, but it appears that Yeti has locked her in. That's a bit of anti-flank if they're particularly worried about getting ran over by DG on the flank late into the round. Looks like double hard breachers for the Sonics, too. So they'll have lots of soft destruction and lots of hard destruction at their disposal. Don't forget that Gridlock comes with a shotgun that can open hatches, and it can open lines of sight through walls and floors quite easily. Not to mention the fact that it actually hits like a truck. So if you get into a close bit of combat, that super shorty can be incredibly strong in a pinch. It's gotta be really close, though. I mean, the damage drop off on that thing is crazy because of the spread. Well, Michael, it's uh, a shotgun. Yeah, I mean, go figure. But I mean, you compare it to like Jane, with it. Jane I own shotgun, for example. Right. Um, no, but uh, of course, yeah, it's a good, it's a good weapon, versatile kit on uh, that gridlock. What the thing that most speaks to me though, Parker, is is the smokes. If you're gonna be bringing multiple sets of smokes on a main lobby defense. Usually, that suge suggests to me that you want to go for a smoke plant by the front door or something similar. Now, we'll find out if that is the play from the Sonics and in due course what they do need to still do if they are going for a top uh sorry if they are going for a main lobby smoke plant is clear it up upstairs um because yeah you could you could still deny a plant from above also the warden is going to play a huge role in stopping that if it be the attack that sonics employ well we'll see exactly what the sonics can muster up here on this very final defense before side swamp and i 
I've got a feeling we're going to hit the reset button and have a 3-3 first half and then an unpredictable shootout from that point forward. Like I said, I want 15 rounds. I don't know if we're going to get it. But we can speculate. I mean, we're coming close to it right now. I mean, if, when you have an even half on a map like Consulate, which is fairly well balanced, I, it suggests that we might get that, but still early days, I suppose. I think the gridlock as well, when you mentioned the smokes, is interesting because this is the bomb site that DG favored the Warden on the last time they defended it. They're going to go with it yet again. DP Fire stayed upstairs. In fact, he never got removed from his spot over on Connector, which is exactly where he's playing right now. Still watching and daring an engagement over towards Paper. Got one my magnet, so any disruption that could potentially come. Well, it might not actually hit the target that it needs. The smoke instead will obscure. J90 drops through the hatch, and DG, the call is made. You need to get out of there as quickly as you can. So the Sonics mm. have cleared out that top portion of the upstairs, but they've still got some more work to be done. It looks like a full rotation from Disrupt down below. The one question that will remain, have they drone out Retro above? He's playing inside a bathroom on that top floor. A sneaky maestro with that Alda in hand can just rip through you, and it looks like the first engagement with him could be coming very quickly. Now he's set up on the right angle, though. This is going to be difficult for the attackers to challenge if they don't have the information. JNNO is also in the basement, so he'll be able to see for any plant attempt by the front door from that hatch. Good cutoff by Visa. Yeti doing his job, and Can's in there to support him. You can see there's lots of information, or lots of C4 play here from below. JNNO could have used that to deny a plant, but he'll use it to do some damage to Yeti instead. Interesting decision. He thought he had something. Not quite. There's still plenty of time for the Sonics to set up their attack, but they are starting to get kind of low. They're going to need to start pushing into the site and actually hitting it. And two players from DG down below. Two above means that they've got a very heavy split with only one focused on the bomb site on that actual level. A drone will go by. Still unsure if Retro's been spotted. He thinks there's somebody over towards Visa. Shuttle will need to retake. Diffuser getting planted by Super. The coverage will need to be better, though. Rexon shuts down Retro. So there's the Maestro. The Diffuser goes down successfully by Super, and the Sonics have a lockout on the post plant. Traded back and forth, though. DP Fire takes down one Yeti on his own, but it's Yeti and Grixer to seal the deal. No retake potential from Disrupt. The first half in the books is split three to three. Like what I saw there from Yeti, so we were focusing on it just a little bit towards the beginning of the action. Uh, but Yeti was the hard cutoff on the rotation highway that is Visa. And because of that rotation cutoff, you could see clearly that the disrupts were disru uh, disrupt players were disrupted. It was not an easy thing to deal with Yeti with an LMG and those track steers on the floor. So with that rotation cutoff uh, and disrupt able to get the, the smokes and the coverage in the actual site itself, denying the vertical pressure... Uh, there wasn't a lot that Disrupt could have done to stop that plant. So that is that pre-planned attack to deal with the Disrupt setup that I was waiting for. Attackers need to locate Good on Sonics to employ it, uh, even if it came at the very end of the half. Well, first setup now from Sonics as we switch sides. Timeout still remaining from both teams, and Sonics lineup looks semi-similar to what we've seen out of a typical consulate defense down below. DG have changed two things up. Number one, they like bringing Lion. The mute from Super means that if you're standing on a jammer, then, well, you're not going to be detected. And that's nice for the defenders, but depending on where those mute jammers are, you're not necessarily going to be camping all of them. Additionally, Vigil counters uh, Lion, so think about it. You have Rexen, who's already sitting at a whopping nine kills. If Shuttle activates that EE1D, then Rexen's going to be able to just continue his warpath and just run around the map undetected. Outside of that, you've got a Habana instead of an Ace, but for DG, their lineup is looking similar to Sonic's as well. I didn't suspect that we would see much of a change here between these two teams with the operators that they rolled out. Nothing too crazy going on. I, I, I do really like the Mozzie Mute. I mean, they're not the only meta... Right? Obviously, there's, there's a lot of options these days, but it's still really cool to disrupt that information. Along with the Vigil, too. Insult to injury there at that point. It's going to be hard for Disrupt to isolate their opponents in terms of information, but Disrupt has been consistently good at winning gunfights, at least on defense. I suspect it's not going to be too different now that they're on the attacking side. Bottom floor defense. We do have a Kayid in play. No Electrocaws in his pocket, though. He's pre-placed all of them, probably for the main panel, so the drops will be openable. Assuming there's no electric cause on either of them. Top floor clear is going to finally come to blows as these uh, attackers start to confront the three defenders upstairs. And make that two as one falls back. 
Minute off the clock now, as Sonic still have a holdout of Rexon above. They're gonna have to take a gunfight to him and drone him out. There goes the Lion EE1D, but remember, his cloaking device is up, which means that Rexon is capable of moving. Unfortunately, he's gonna be boxing at Shadows, and J90 drags him down. That's the very first pick. Swiftly refragged, though, by Yeti onto Iconic. That's one of your hard destructors that's down. Unsure of how much of that garage panel's been opened up, but regardless, Hibana's focus would likely be on those hatches, and because of that, it means that those hatches should stay solid for the Sonics. That is excellent for their chances moving forward as we hit the final minute of this round. One thing that's not great for the Sonics is that there's two of the four remaining defenders stuck in the bathroom upstairs, and there's the rotation for the drop is not open. So they have to just fight it out and win it here, or they'll just lose the round. J90 takes down Yeti, one of the bathroom players, leaving just Rickster. Not suspected, though, and J90 won't even check. That's going to punish him. The second kill will be there for Grixer and possibly the third, but nope, Retro will shut him down. In the two versus two now, there's still plenty of time for Shuttle and Retro to orchestrate their attack onto the site. Good use of Thermite to circumvent the Electro Claw, and the drop above site will open. Kansan post up down below inside of security. It's a 2v2. This will essentially be a shootout. 30 seconds remaining, and while the HP advantage favors SQ, but it's not by that much... There's still a Nitro Cell in both the hands of the defenders. His bullets whiz over the shoulder of Super. He tries to reposition, takes a ton of damage in the process. It's just, it'll be Shuttle to watch him. Shuttle is just inches away from being able to walk in, but Kanzen pops down that diffuser, and Shuttle's looking the wrong way. Up top, it's him now against Super in a 1v1. They'll have to duel with just two seconds left. Shuttle doesn't have a lot of time, and Super will just play hideaway as Shuttle goes for the shots on the feet. The clock give the Sonics the round and the lead. A uh, crucial moment there when you aren't sure if you have a secondary or a gone six, maybe a fat finger. I'm not sure what happened, but an extra second or two, and we might have seen Super actually die to those shots prone. Um, so that hesitation from Shuttle ended up costing huge. Really cheeky position, by the way, from the Kaid inside of security. Oh, that's, uh, that's going to net you a freebie for sure. But obviously it's a death sentence once you are known in that position. The clock, as you mentioned, Parker, was a crucial factor there for the Sonics. Disrupt were very slow on their attack. I think that... Double checking. I think it's probably the slowest attack we've seen so far, and obviously the first attack for Disrupt. I mean, outside of the clutch that needed to happen from Sonics on attack, yeah, that's definitely the slowest in terms of team execution, which doesn't bode well yeah. for Disrupt moving forward, but I mean, it could have just simply been a byproduct of the site that they were going on to. Also, losing the Hibana early on is particularly damning. That lobby hatch is going to stay open, or it's going to stay shut. The hatch inside of the bathroom, which, mind you, they might have planned for the Thermite charge to go there anyway, would have likely stayed shut as well if there wasn't a pivot that came out from DG. But that's just us speculating. We don't know where that second exothermic charge from the Thermite was going to go. Regardless, it was a damning blow, especially given that Iconic has been one of the best players in the lobby thus far for his team. That round in the books, and it's going to be a lobby defense. Speaking of, though, different lobby, game lobby versus map lobby, as it's the Sonic's second defense. Disruptive subbed out the Thermite for a Jackal, there's been a host of change-ups on the lineup side for Sonics. Just some early repel game here from Disrupt. Very different take than what we were seeing from the Sonics. On the Sonic side, they went for a hard admin take. Clear all the way to projector, then rotate to hit the site through the main lobby. Here for Disrupt, it's just repel, 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 and a nade kill onto Super. Wow! Threading the needle with that nade. I wonder where it came from. Beautiful stuff, and that's going to be a good early kill. Added to by Shuttle, who gets Grixer, one of the top performers on the Sonics. Now more pressure on the remaining three defenders. But there's still two minutes left. It is really Disrupt's round to lose. And unless Rexon goes through the basement, the only way that he's going to make it back towards the site is through the hallway that he could very easily get caught out on, especially if there's somebody playing by Yellow Stairs or over by Zulu. His one coverage is going to be Kanzen with the Alda playing at Spiral Stairs. Watching, prepared, and waiting for somebody to potentially hit him on that bench window. Anson's attention is in that direction. That means that there are only two sets of eyes for Sonics looking elsewhere. One of which is Yeti down below, could potentially be hunted oh. by Disrupt. They know that that evil eye is there. They don't have any explosives to deal with it. The only utility left from DP Fire is a single stun, which means that Kansan can continue to look through that. But no, J90 comes to the rescue. 
And that should clear the evil eye out with the final minute or so of this round left to go with Disrupt in a 5v3. Ooh, here comes the push. Retro with the plant attempt. No coverage other than the guns, but the manpower should be enough here. EE1D to deny the retake as the plant goes down. And there you go. Post plant in one of the most difficult places to deal with for the defenders. And J9O will also add to his tally. Kanzan and Yeti, 30 seconds to get five kills and disable the diffuser. Doesn't seem very likely, but let's see if they can manage it. As Kanzan pushes through Spiral, Desk, he's going to have... Or Circle Desk, he's going to have some angles to deal with on the right and left side. One player in each. Even some attackers pretty far out there. It's, I mean, at this point, it's really looking desperate. And he'll get cut down by Retro. It's just a matter of time at that, at that moment. Uh, flawless round for Disrupt and a really beautiful execution. Boy, oh boy, that one was quite tense at the very end. But still, the number's just too much to overcome. And a flawless round for Disrupt to claim the lobby. How did it start? Well, frankly, we don't really know. It was two very early opening picks that might have even confused Disrupt because they certainly didn't seem like they were lined up, but it wouldn't be outside of the ordinary for somebody to get killed through a window or a barricade without them knowing. A couple lucky shots and a shot to the head, and that's all it takes for either a defender or an attacker, and they're out for the remainder of the round. Losing both Super and Grixer early on, obviously not great. Super would do some calling from the grave slash from the bench as the main IGL of the team. But his presence on the field was sorely missed. Also, losing out on Grixer is never a good thing. He has been consistently one of the best players in the NA League since its inception. So not having him as additional firepower isn't particularly great. Once you've taken two members of the team out, all you need to do is ensure that you've got control over Lobby. And if somebody watches Spiral Stairs and the Antichamber, you're hard-pressed for a retake to happen from the defenders. Couple that with the fact that there were still EE1Ds smartly used by Shuttle, and it's basically a perfect plant by Disrupt that culminates in a flawless round. Well, this is as close as it was expected to be so far. 4-4. Four, four. No one able to run away with it yet. The players you would anticipate performing are doing just that. Not a lot of surprising stuff going on here. Maybe Kanzen could be doing a little bit better. That might make a huge difference for the Sonics. Also seeing more out of Retro than is usual, which is great for Disrupt. This round is going to be a clear from the CEO side. As you can see, obviously from the drone work, lots of Disrupt drones up there. Trying to find out what they're dealing with. Even one down underneath to make sure there's no C4s from below. Looks like that castle barricade in the main lobby got to be opened up. And that allows for good control on the rotation from a potential roamer on the west side of the building. There is none right now for Sonics, but better safe than sorry on the disrupt side. DG trying to push off anybody from the Sonics playing on the west side of the building upstairs. There are none. They're all over on the east side playing by the multitude of fans that exist in admin. Grixer inside a copier. He's got the smokes, and he's going to want to try to hold off as long as possible. He's rubbing elbows with Rexen, playing with the deployable shield, too. So, me oh my, there's a lot of Sonics players that are currently up top, just trying to hold as best as they can. Yeah. Add Kanzen to that one, too, as there's three players from Sonics up there, all defending the same spot. Kanzen's trying to retrieve a magnet. He'll be successful, but not without losing a quarter of his health in the process. Not exactly the result that I'm sure he wanted, but... He's successful in it either way. It's going to be a really tough nut to crack here for Disrupt, and Sonics are doing a great job of delaying the inevitable push. Here comes the EE1D to maybe facilitate a push, but no, it's just keep them standing still, and Kanzen actually gets the lead off onto Iconic. Once again, you're losing your Habana early on. Not great for Disrupt. The Sonics really need to start putting some bullets in the bodies of DG. They're doing just that. Rexen finds one DP fire. Could be the next one to drop. He's going to do his best to remove those members of Sonics. Yeti is down, but the Jaeger of Rexen is just so good. His second pickup on the round. Shuttle finishes off Yeti. But it might be a Pyrrhic victory as right now Sonics have the upper hand. And in the seesaw of a matchup, just simply having one more body than your opponents can make all the difference in the world. Does Kanzen want to engage in this gunfight? He could be potentially giving up the monumental lead that Sonics have in terms of numbers. Retro will fall off, EE1D goes, and DG will have no choice but to rotate. Shuttle down below, well, his gadget's not going to be that effective now that he's gone. Retro holding the case is a 1v4 on his hands. 
It's a teller's archives take, which means that if he runs into the site, he'll still have to worry about nitro cells, but he won't even get that far. Rexon cuts him down at the pass. A 3k from Rexon and Sonics take the lead. Big round from Rexon to be sure. I said it was a tough, tough nut to crack there for Disrupt, and it certainly was, but only thanks to actually holding the position on that dedicated roam from Sonics. Worked out great. We're going to see a tactical timeout here for Disrupt, and this is probably the right time, Parker, I'd say. I mean, you, you got a round just now that you absolutely one-sidedly lost. Um, you have to pull out the pocket strats to pick up a dub and bring yourself in again into contention, uh, bring us through that even round count if you're Disrupt. Well, the timeout from Disrupt will hopefully pay dividends and it will go on with the stats that we pulled actually after the last play day talking about how when teams take a timeout, they tend to succeed almost immediately. More often than not, it results in a one round or potentially even two. For Disrupt, a single round puts them back on even footing with the Sonics and guarantees that we need every round of regulation to get to a conclusion. It could also mean that we need overtime. I mean, Sonics win here and they'll have Disrupt on the ropes as it'll be match point for SQ for the remainder of the matchup and the only thing that will save Disrupt will be overtime. I think it's also worth noting here that the people who are keeping track of this matchup to see who qualifies for the Mexico Major, it doesn't matter if it goes to overtime or not. The winner qualifies, that's it. It can be done in regulation, it can be done in overtime. If DG makes it to overtime and loses, or if Sonics makes it to overtime and loses, it doesn't matter, they still lost. They go home empty-handed. Bottom floor defense here for the Sonics, as they hope to bring us on to match point. Rexon has been a huge part of that story so far. A dozen kills to his name so far, and uh, he's really been putting in that performance that you need. On the side of Disrupt, a more even split in terms of performance. But that's actually uh, something we've come to expect from Disrupt. They've been really even uh, overall, and it, it really is telling of teamwork, if you ask me. Opening up the drop down early on for the Sonics suggests to me that they are going to invest once again heavily into their roam. Uh, as we, I'm sure most of us remember, there was a round where the Sonics had four players up and two of them were stuck in bathroom. That could have cost them dearly because the drop was reinforced. So they're trying to avoid that this time around. I can't help but feel losing Iconic in round 7 and 9 ended up being the catalyst for Disrupt. Losing that Hibana early on, losing an incredible player on your roster, and then of course all that comes with Hibana too. Uh oh. It awfully tough. What is... He's got the hammer ready. And they go in. Super's gonna have to fall off. He realizes that. DP Fire takes some damage. Down goes Super and Iconic is off to the races. Retro will need to follow in quickly behind. J90 punished. Iconic takes some damage, they'll need to get that diffuser down. Yeti watching from above, but the Sonics are wise to this! It was a timeout and a nice play from Disrupt, but it doesn't go quite as far as they would have liked. Oh! DP Fire picks up three big kills, he'll now pivot towards Yellow Stairs, but he's got so many angles that he has to keep an eye on. Does he know that there's somebody over on Yellow Stairs? There was! Are they still there? No, Shuttle has his sight set over there. Now it's Grixer to wait. A pre-fire, it will connect with DP Fire, but Grixer just walks backwards, he doesn't need to give an inch. Yeti on that spot that DP Fire was looking at before he gets caught by Yeti, silencing the hottest gun, and this is match point if they can pull it off. Shuttle will need to clutch, but Yeti's shotgun is better, and the Sonics sit on match and major point. Big win there for Yeti. Great use of the open drop, and that slight difference in the initial setup of the Sonics' defense made all the difference in the end. And sometimes when you get a little excited, you get a little spittle on your monitor. It happens. Uh, well earned there for Yeti and well earned for the Sonics. They are now one round away from being done with this match and securing their points, uh, their position, I should say, at the Mexican Major. It's not done yet, though. We've seen Disrupt rally from these positions before. It wouldn't be surprising to see them do it here again. That rush, I really like the idea of it, Parker, but it just, it was, as you said, Sonics were wise to it. Retro was also a little bit too slow. If you go back and watch it, Retro was one of the last people in. Thermite mm. has access to smokes. Get Retro in there, get that plant down immediately. But I think they were going for a bit more of a surprise. Overwhelm Super, take him out, push towards the back of the site, and have their comms be a mess. But it doesn't end up working out that way. 
And for them, it means that this is it. This is Knife's Point, Razor's Edge for Disrupt. Their hopes of representing North America as one of the four teams from the region at the Mexico Major seemingly slipping through their hands. It was mentioned by the analysts that Super is the only person other than Retro and Shuttle who have appeared at an international event. The only person on Sonics. This is a green roster, so to speak, when it comes to international events. Well, Super's the only one to represent SQ before at an international major, and well, for the rest of the team, there looks like they're going to get their shot, but we've still got three minutes left, and we don't want to write it off. Trixer, though, will go for a dagger to the heart as it looked like a spawn peak was on the board, and that could have completely deflated Disrupt. The biggest problem I've noticed about Disrupt's attacks is that they are too timid with their use of angles. If they find themselves in a position where they can either peek it to the angle, take the fight, or hold the passive and wait for the fight to come to death, that's not what you do, Yeti. Not, it's not what you do on match point. I don't even know how that happens, but regardless, Grixer's going to be on cam duty, so Yeti sends him to the Shadow Realm. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, Disrupt. Timid on angles, they need to be more aggressive. They, they need to be more assertive. That's what I was trying to get out. Now, the job is being done for them by Yeti. Now, he earned that because he clutched the last round, but still, bad Yeti. Bad. Well, Rexon with the punch here, trying to open up some of this window, and there was one silhouette from Disrupt nearby. Mm -hmm. This is a lobby defense on that very first floor. So far, the defense is from the Sonics looking very clean. Need we remind everybody how proficient Disrupt is on this map. They are on a current five map winning streak on Consulate. That'll be broken. And the worst time for that streak to break as well, with so much on the line for them. Oh. After losing Grixer, though, Sonics mm. know they've got some work to be done, and that's why they repositioned, obviously, to try to account for that. Yeah, it's not done yet. That streak is still intact until the very last second. But one minute to convert this into a sight hit, and they've just barely started to get control upstairs. Disrupt do need to pick things up here. They need, do need to go a little bit faster, or they're going to hit the brick wall of that clock. That's J90 now watching Yellow Stairs. One minute remaining for them. Yeti repositioned over towards Visa. He's got Rexon nearby. They're still quite a ways from the bomb site, and the oh, way to get back can be easily what? watched. Yeti sprints out. He takes one down, but he's traded out by Retro. Advantage still in the favor of Disrupt. They've got 40 seconds to stitch together the successful defense. For the Sonics, they've got Super Rexon and Kanzen left up right. Rexon on 13 kills so far through these 10 rounds. He leads the lobby oh, by a oh. country mile. Rexon, though, on oh. the flank! He's going to add number 14 to it. There's a drone watching, but it's in the wrong direction. What was an advantage for DG has evaporated and we're back into a 3v3. They'll need to get that diffuser planted and that's in Retro's hands to do just that. Rexon's still lording above them. He'll need to get as quickly as he can to his teammates. Super pops up, outdueled by Retro. Kanzen firing away. He's taken down. It'll need to be Rexon to play a hero. And he's getting a ping. He sees him! But can he get the position? Yes, he can! And the Sonics will get their spot at the Mexico Major. They take it 7-4. Massive plays from Rexon. The cautious approach to that retake upstairs pays dividends. As you so often like to say, Parker, beautiful reactions to the situation. Rexon navigates.